Today we're going to visit one interesting place, it's called King 5. Yeah, let's see what they are up to. Welcome for another beautiful day here in Dubai. Because whatever I think was going to happen in the future, it's going to happen in the future. But today we need to work on certain technologies to enable us to improve our life by a small incremental step forward. Can you imagine the robot or any device which can hear or see wherever you see and then apply this information make kind of judgments, movements, execute something. Like, like really, really you're the really wrong. Who can do a lot of things instead of you or, or for you. Like I was thinking that, can you imagine an assistant who knows the way how you can, how, how, how you can get laugh? And what is the main touching subjects for you? So yeah, personal coach. Personal assistant is one of the things which we, I think, we will embrace. You're gonna know all around you, all the knowledge in the world. Where are you gonna ask? Chemistry, biology, how far away is the moon? You ask, and he'll say, okay, 383,000 from the Earth, if I remember correct. But this artificial intelligence study, he will gonna know precisely. So his information will be so valid so valuable at the same time, so you're not being dull, is it correct, is it not correct? Well, here we are, a place called King 5, you know, in the Yeah, you see, King 5. One-on-one -on -one office hours, we have lots of startups, developers, entrepreneurs who come and speak to us about how they can make use of these new technologies, like you mentioned, artificial intelligence, data yeah. science, internet of things, and now blockchain is the new buzzword. Yeah. So all these startups want to know how they can like cash in on this tech and make it integrated into the applications. What's your expertise? What are you are kind of expert in? I come from a software development background. Uh, I've been a web, mobile and IoT developer for the past couple of years and for the past year I've been a developer advocate for IBM. Mm -hmm. So what that means is it's my role to help out other developers, whether you're in a startup, you're an enterprise, you're in education or open source. So you come from the digital community of developers, whether that's like GitHub, Stack Overflow, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. To help them understand and make use of the services on IBM Cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazon Cloud and IBM Cloud is huge things uh, for future development in the artificial intelligence field. So the power which you require, how you can get it, you can buy it on all service and for the hundreds of thousands uh, or you can yeah, buy it. Yeah, so that, that's a good thing. We actually have a program for startups. It's called IBM Global Entrepreneur, where startups can work with us, with developer advocates, whether you're at Info or any of the other startup clubs here in the UAE. And you can do it for free for one year. No matter what sort of technology you're working with, like yeah. as small yeah. or as big as you're planning to build, you can do that with us for free for you. Well, that's amazing playground. Yeah, you see, easy place. People working. Many people ask me, oh yeah, it's, it's just in Dubai like that. I will say no, it's everywhere in the world. And we have this discussion with one, one guy, ask what, what the people think about the filming in general and so on. He said, no, he, they, they will be just happy, just film everything all right. And you see, think, I don't see what's happening in the background. I'm filming myself like that. In the same time, some guy stands behind me and just shows, no, no, no filming. I have discussion with him. He said, yes, yes, yes. Five meters from you, you have other guy who just sold, just take it away, each other. So, yeah, people have different kind of uh, opinions about that kind of expression, which says, uh, "Don't judge, and you will not gonna be judged." Yeah, I think the new way of thinking is like that: judge and be ready to be judged. So, if you wanna hide under the table. 
no way. Somebody will get you. <laughs> somehow, some way. The future development of artificial intelligence will be incremental. Each day by day we are all going to develop something new, like new ticket system, a new access system, maybe new learning system. When this, uh, already you now can speak with Siri in your iPhone and ask Siri how far away is the moon and Siri will going to say you. But uh, the, all this knowledge which you will be able to, to get from your companion, which will be backed by artificial intelligence, will enable you to know nearly everything about everything. There's many things which we can, we can talk, uh, if you have something interesting, just on, maybe you work on some specific project and share your, your, your ideas, your, your visions. Uh, you have hundreds of people documents, mm -hmm. thousands of people. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a lot of time for a human to actually go and read and understand all of them. Mm -hmm. So when you have a question, for example, how to do something, mm -hmm. uh, you need to scan through all the documents and find the right answer. Mm -hmm. This sort of speeds up the process, so you teach it to understand maybe a hundred mm -hmm. out of a thousand. And then it automatically understands the rest, so you can search, you can understand, you can do much more with it. The startups are part of in five. They do get access to up to 120,000 cloud credit per year to use on cloud services. Here are some of the services available, whether they want to work with infrastructure, compute, uh, whether they want to work with artificial intelligence, such as Watson, uh, to understand unstructured text, or if they want to work with structured text to do some machine learning, predictive analytics, internet of things, blockchain, all these kind of, you know, Topics, high top topics, and they're available out there for someone to start working with and develop their next big straight idea. The good thing about cloud nowadays is that it's easily accessible by pretty much anyone with little experience. So you've got all, all the big companies Google, Amazon, IBM, Microsoft, Oracle, now Alibaba even has a cloud service. So there are so many options for people, all kinds of price ranges, whether you want enterprise level, startup level, it's all available. Easy to use, most of them are easy to use. And the good thing about them is the more and more our services are being integrated. So most of them now are actually starting to integrate artificial intelligence, which is, you know, it's bringing artificial intelligence to the masses. Everyone now, you know, can get their hands on some form of artificial intelligence. For AI and machine learning, there are so many open source tools, really, really good. I mean, one of the most famous ones is TensorFlow for deep learning. So TensorFlow tries to mimic how the human brain's, you know, neurons are connected and develop something called the neural network. Uh, so that's why it's called artificial intelligence. It's not strictly thinking, it just mimics the way the brain works. Another one's making, generating memes that actually respond to text. You know, you send it something and it goes back to the meme of an emoji. So you can do these kind of cool stuff with AI. That's the nice thing. It's not just boring all day. You can get some funny stuff out of it. A certain approach to you, how you can be entertained or get you laugh. And I was thinking, my sense of humor can be different from your sense of humor. And there is specific things which kind of triggers your laugh. So in future, your artificial intelligence module will gonna know exact things which, which you like, which can trigger your laugh. And then you come home and you open your some machine and you say, oh, what's funny today? And the machine will deliver, you know, the specific made for you the jokes which will trigger uh, your, your laugh. So that's one uh, funny uh, technology which we will, I, I, I believe we're gonna see very fast. Okay, we, we have now uh, the person who is responsible about uh, joking machine. Um, we're taking a database of jokes with their ratings, so they're previously rated. For your joke it's called, are you funny enough? And then you enter your joke, and the model then predicts from like breaking down the sentence you entered or the joke, and finding these common words that are... And the fashion in language is the same thing as a fashion in clothes. They come and go, it's always like that in different languages. So, and also in jokes, so I understand you can use the specific words which kind of now on the top. If you don't set them, then your joke is valid. Your. It's not like commercial project for you now. No. Yeah, it's just like... Yeah, I'm just having fun. You're exercising, having fun, you know, you see people having fun and exercising and things, yeah. Yeah, I believe that's the way to go also uh, by exercising, by searching. Once you're not on the constraint of the, uh, the earning money and, uh, and uh, surviving things, you are able to produce the things which can be uh, like art, because art doesn't deliver you solution in some way. They don't entertain you. 
they don't uh, inform you like you know the the postures or something like that they just give you ability to see things in different angle in different light and that's a value of the art when you go for example in, in Louvre and Abu Dhabi you will see so many uh, pieces of art from the ancient times which not uh, directly corresponds to the story or the, the, the appearance of the animal or, or the human they in such a level of um, they are in such a level of, of, of creativity that they can give you the hint of what the idea was about and at the same time keep you thinking keep you guessing and, uh, and by that you are able to, to see in the world from a different angle and that enables you to produce maybe something out of the box as we speak very often you know, the value of this ability to see things out of the box. Everything what you see around you is just the things which serve you, you know, the phone, the glasses, this stuff, the, the chair, the table. And if it's not serve you as a person, as, a, as, as us, as humanity at all, together, it's pointless. And we see the big companies like the Nokia and the Kodak. We know the Kodak effect, you know, how big and strong there was company. And the Nokia, can you imagine the world leader, number one, we connecting the people and this company is like dismissed from the market. And who knows if they will be able to, to catch up. So whatever we produce, it should be kind of human oriented that comfort us and give us possibilities. Once we will focus more on, on human needs and how to serve those human needs, we're going to improve our society in general. Uh, smart technologies uh, which will going to analyze all the fluids from your body, even in your bathroom. They will tell you what's wrong with you, in which period of time, what you need to change, what is in excess, which material or which compound in your body is in scarcity. So analyzing constantly the environment around you and the food supply, the air and the water and so on. Well, I think in the near future we'll be seeing cars driving themselves around. The most important currency in this age is time. People trying to save time everywhere. Yeah. So I see uh, self-driving cars, robots and chatbots handling everything from yeah, yeah. Agree. household to chores yeah. to doing things in business. You see, it's a very practical approach. What I want to know is where is the fun? Or where is the where this moment of kind of a little bit craziness because we we definitely will solve all these technical issues to shorten all the process automate all the processes where is the fun you know? now the cool car is with the bad exhaust if you're rumbling around like dinosaur everybody thinks yeah that's cool you you manage this beast under you and you can manage what 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 is a cool car of the future then i think it will be cool if it can fly as well yeah so it can avoid the traffic altogether yeah i agree yeah. What I was, was, I was guessing, cool car of the future is a car who will be so polite, so intelligent, the car will, will gonna stop and they maybe they will say, hello, you can do that or that, and I'm waiting for you. So interaction between car and, and the public and you around you will be so profoundly intelligent that the car will gonna understand without any interaction with you, where the car need to go, how fast, how much time, what is the temperature you need, what is your schedule, which will be synced to your phone or other device. So that's kind of be the, the most intelligent and most polite car will, the, will be like coolest. You're amazing! And Mondays is from 1 to 5, you can come over and ask your questions here in, in Magical Place in 5. We know the famous IBM Watson that was uh, winning the game called Jeopardy. You guys can Google it and find the details about it. 
Actually, the Ray Kurzweil talks extensively about this game, how profound this was. The first in, the, in, in the human history, the machine was winning the, not just the arithmetical or chess game, but the game which involves human analyzing the things, the creativity. So, but uh, today we will touch upon the things which is kind of concerning each another of us who works in the field of developing the programs and, and applications and how we can use IBM, IBM services. So, like you said, exactly how Watson was used to play the game Jeopardy. It was able to analyze natural language input. All these services are now available for startups and developers to work on. So whether I'm actually taking natural language text, if I'm trying to understand what I'm saying as a human, to understand the intent, the purpose, yeah, yeah. there are a bunch of Watson services available as APIs. Really just functions that any developer can go and integrate this functionality within the application, right? So you've yeah. got language-based services, you've got vision-based services, so you're able to analyze anything that the camera is seeing or uh, yeah, any yeah, video yeah, feed that's yeah, coming yeah. in. Any speech-based services, so speech-to-text and text-to-speech, yes, yes, as well yes. as database. So you can build your own uh, like cognitive search engine where yeah. you just search in natural language rather than as a developer having to query it. Yeah, we was to, today I was talking about uh, image recognition system because we work on the on the application which will enable people like you who creates the content in YouTube to, to speed up the process, uh, make it more efficient. What kind of tools you have for uh, speech and vision recognition systems and what kind of outcome people can ex expect because they will gonna feed some kind of information to the, your modules and what kind of outcome uh, they will, will receive. Okay, so let's start with the speech. You've got speech to text that's able to take in any incoming speech in, a, in about nine to 10 different languages and con convert it into text, so transcribe text it for you. Or you've got text to speech, which is able to take any text input and make it uh, like a highly modular speech output. So you can make the sound like an old person, like a young person, like they're apologetic, like they're happy, yeah. that they're yeah. concerned. So there's a lot of fun stuff that you can play around uh, with text to speech, which is actually quite funny. I can show you later. Um, and lastly, like you mentioned, vision. So yeah. that's called visual recognition, Watson visual recognition. So you can pass any image to it and it's going to classify it and tell you exactly what sort of thing is within the frame. Like where Dog, cup. Yeah, exactly. But the, it doesn't stop at dog. It's going to tell you what type of dog. Where it really excels is if you want to train your own custom classifier. So now my sort of input is not just what I'm seeing every day, like in a park, in a landscape, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. My sort of input could be like medical diagnosis. It could be satellite imagery. Now, if I want to train my own custom classifier for that, it is super easy to do that using Watson Visual Recognition. So all you need to do is provide about 20 images of your classes, what you're trying to identify. So say we're taking satellite imagery, right? Yeah. I want to identify pools, I want to identify uh, parking lots, baseball fields and so on. And it's really easy to train the service and then deploy it in your real-time environment. If you had to do it yourself from scratch, you would need to be a machine learning expert to build, train those models, test those models before putting it into a production environment. So there's a website called IBM Code, which is the go-to place to learn anything related to IBM Cloud. You get lots of ready-made code patterns, you get tutorials, you get webinars, you can connect with the developer advocate. So if you've got an idea and you want to help build it, you can do that through IBM Code. So the website is developer.ibm.com slash code. Uh, and of course, if you want like face-to-face -face discussions, you want to do pair programming, debugging sessions, come to one of our meetups or workshops or hackathons and you can connect with a developer advocate to make this happen. As a next generation tech idea, you can come and speak to the IBM developer advocates. We're here every, uh, every Monday from 1 to 5 p.m. You can come and just speak to us about your idea and we're gonna break it down into the 170 plus services that are there on IBM Cloud. So really all the building blocks for you to create a prototype this new idea, whether it's mobile, it's security, it's Watson, machine learning, data science, IoT, or anything else you might need. Well guys, here, here we have, you have your building blocks, then just don't forget to play with them and make something valuable.